Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break, your home for current community talk, with Patricia Duart, Darlene Hayes, and Connie Wright. Hello, and welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break. So excited to have a guest joining us, a new <laughs> resident of Hopkinton, Tamoria Seba. Welcome, welcome. Thank Thanks for Thank joining you. us. Thank you guys so much for the warm welcome. Yeah. Um, I really appreciate uh, you guys having reached out to me to be a part of the show today. I'm excited. Absolutely. Cool. We're excited yeah. to have you. Just, I'm going to be like Tom, I'm Tom Cruise excited. <laughs> <laughs> you all here, too. Don't, 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 don't talk on the table. Yeah. All right. It, 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 it can only go up from our couches to like the horribles parade. Oh, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You were such a fun spirit on the page. I mean, when you first came, you, you can share with us. You moved here from New Jersey, and and uh, you know, shared a very innocent question that sparked a lot of conversation. Yeah. Something about Who you. Knew? That, yeah, Who knew really. That asking uh, what type of uh, small SUV right. should one have uh, for weather conditions and children would spark such a conversation. I it was one it. of the longest threads for yeah. a while. <laughs> And right. then it turned into real estate <laughs> right. and uh, pocket listings being PM to me and just, you know, it was amazing. Well, yeah, amazing. And, and bear in mind, we learned on this show some time ago the drop threads and yeah. it, it pertains to live conversation mm -hmm. and virtual conversations. We start here, we go here, oh, and then we come back here. <laughs> so what did you end up buying for a car then? Yeah. So, oh wow, I'm gonna tell everyone, everyone's gonna see me in town, so um, when you see me driving really that, crazily, that big you know, you're like, okay, give me a pass, <laughs> give me a pass. Um, I ended up with a Mazda CX-5, very safe oh, cool. feeling. I like to sit up high so mm -hmm. I can see everything. Uh, you know, I don't like a long hood. Yes. It's just not good for me, I where I feel like I have to lean over and do all this crazy stuff in the car, so, and I think it was recommended by like five women on the okay. on the board. So God, yeah, so, so it's kind of funny. Yeah. So the story about why you why you you're, you're kind of new to driving. Yeah. So yeah, oh. <laughs> I mean really. really. I mean so <laughs> I went from Maryland where I grew up to New York to, for work. You know, in my early to mid mid twenties. And so you never have to drive in right, New York, right. you know, and I never really drove back home really either because I always lived in places with really good public transportation. Right. Yeah. So um, it's been a long time since I've had to do this. You know, and so, um, uh, you know, the other day, I had pumped my own gas for the first time. You know, and seriously, I'm not kidding you. I actually Googled, Seven. I'm like, I'm at the gas station, I'm like, uh, how to look right pumping gas. Because I was, <laughs> I was in the car and I sat in front of the tank. First, I'm like, okay, where's the thing for the tank again? Okay, then I look down and I'm like, is anybody watching? Do did I look you get really the weird? right side of the vehicle? The proper side of the vehicle? Because I, 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 I did. I was so happy that. that I wouldn't have to embarrass myself, turn around, back out. I've done that. I've know, done that. Because then I'm stressing out about the K turn and the whole thing. Are people in <laughs> front of me? Are they behind me? Am I going to have to go around? So I just was like, I have to get this right. So, so I'm going to give you a little hint. Yeah. Because we have three cars and um, all of them are the, different. The, all are different, but the, the, the thing is, so when you pull in the gas station, look at your little thing. There's yes, an arrow right, right next to um, where your gas gauge yeah, is. Yeah. That little arrow says what side of the car it's on. I yeah. discovered that. I have to use that. Really? I do that every time. I'm Rattle a cars. Oh. That's the only. Yeah. It's like I still do I it every time I pull it. I'm like, oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah. So back up a little bit. You have two children. I do. So how old are they? So uh, one is almost six, and one is almost two. I love They're, their names. Yep. Yeah. Do I have to tell the whole town their name? No. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I mean, I don't mind. No, yeah, please. I, I mean, think this they're cute. Small, this isn't going to be aired like in Japan. And no, 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 no. no. Um, Not yet. So, okay. <laughs> Harper and Grayson. Oh, yeah. So, so uh, yeah. Grayson is at Center School. Mm -hmm. She's loving it. Oh. Great teacher, great school. You know, it was uh, coming in uh, from New Jersey, the New York area and um, getting into, obviously, this is more of a rural lifestyle mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. You know, to us, this is like, you know, uh, the, the movie Baby Boom. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be making jam soon. I've left this out. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. right. 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 Not quite, but yeah. 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 <laughs> like Harper's picture on a bottle of jam at Waterfresh Farm. <laughs> 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 yeah, something like Visions. that. Yeah. Um, you know, so we did a lot of research before uh, we moved here. We have family in various towns in Boston, but I always tell people we want it like our own town. You know, just so, you know, we had a special place for our family to make memories and things mm -hmm. like that. So, of course, we took that top 125 schools cool. list that came out in Boston Magazine, and we, I think we actually looked at all 125, you know, on the internet. 
but when it came time to start uh, looking for a home and a place to settle, we probably took the top 30. Mm -hmm. And we just, like every, uh, like I would say like every month, tried to do two to three towns, you know, while we were here for a visit. And so um, we were obsessed with Holliston first. I think I told you guys this. And then um, one day I said to my husband, hey, the town a little bit further west is a really good school system. I really like the housing stock I'm seeing. Let's give it, let's give it a shot. Let's take a look. We came to visit and that was it. I looked at a house pretty close to Waterfresh Farm, actually, and I love the, the farmhouse style and all this stuff. And um, as we went around town, you know, people were very lovely, even in Holliston, too, everywhere around here. You know, people were always, uh, hi, how are you doing? Are you new in town? You know, and it was just a, a, a really nice feeling, and we felt like this was going to be great. it. So, yeah. So, yeah. Well, that's so and, great. Uh, a little bit of a shout out because it's not just because you just moved to town, but you do some interesting things. I'm, a, I'm an interesting person, a little bit. <laughs> I mean, I, you know. So tell us more. A little tell bit. Us more. Yeah. Bit. So talk um, a little bit about uh, your career and, and sure. your um, passions. So um, I've my whole life, um, I was always involved in, in some way with uh, like fashion or beauty from the time I was a teenager. Um, but in my mind, there, there, I was always trying to find a way to apply it to helping people. And um, when I was younger, I met a makeup artist who volunteered her time um, on, at hospitals helping women who had been through traumatic situations, um, putting eyebrows back on them after cancer treatments, mm -hmm. customizing wigs, um, just all sorts of different things just to help you look your best. Because I think it doesn't mean you need to wear fake lashes and have smoky eyes every day, but whatever <laughs> yeah. you can do to me, I eyes. mean, just for me, just for me, <laughs> right, right. Just, uh, but, you know, for most women, it's just the smallest thing can make such a big difference in terms of how you feel. So I always knew that I was going to be in the beauty business my whole life. It was everything that I wanted to do. And so I moved to New York at 24 years old. I was discovered at an event by Bobby Brown. I'd mm -hmm. been uh, doing makeup in Maryland a long time. I met Bobby Brown. She asked me if I wanted to move to New York. Three months later, I was working side by side with her fashion week. It was wow. like that dream come true. It was. It was a dream come true. Wow. I loved every second of it. And I got to travel the world. I've done makeup for royal families. I've oh. worked with Mariah Carey oh and um, Ellen Barkin and mm -hmm. Candace Bushnell was a good client who became, I would call her a good friend. You know, oh. she was, it was so funny to have watched Sex in the City in my <laughs> early 20s and then end up doing her makeup wow. and having this wonderful, that is so cool, fun. Having this cool relationship because I got to like, she was kind of like my New York mentor, you know, mm -hmm. like I would tell her about the guys I was dating or what I was up to and I'd had like the real life, you know, like Carrie Bradshaw, right. like the real <laughs> Carrie Bradshaw. <laughs> advice, like, right. where should I go? What yeah. should I wear? You know, so we had a really special relationship and I'm, I'm always grateful, you know, that I had her as a client and, you know, just also someone I could talk to as a young woman about yes. how the city works, you know, so. Uh, well, look, um, for another time, but I actually so picked is, her yeah. brain for giving advice to my daughter, who's a young yeah. professional oh, in New oh, York. Yeah. And, 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 and just, you know, <laughs> my yeah. daughter's a senior at Pratt studying fashion, fashion yeah. design. Oh. And, and sorry, mommy Bright, she's <laughs> rocking it. Yeah. Just is doing an internship with Jason. Yeah. Well, yeah. She's like, like, that's awesome. So yeah, it's exciting. Come to it, town it, it is exciting. It's, it's and very I, exciting. And this is so wonderful. So, so it's your husband's husband. job that moved you here. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it's kind of funny. A um, little bit of green from, acres here. Sorry. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. coming from the city to here. I mean, I grew up here, but my husband moved from Boston here mm -hmm. when we got married, and. You know, some of his things were always like, I cannot believe I can't get a pizza delivered at midnight. There isn't a Chinese food place that <laughs> right. delivers. Right. You know, yeah. oh my God, I have to, now there's price jumper, but it used yeah. to be like to go to a major grocery oh, store was 20 yeah. minutes away. Yeah. And have, has there been any of that? Like, oh my gosh. What, what if no, been just sort of like, it's like I, you can't I don't, roll out the house I don't and walk care anywhere. about any of it anymore. Yeah. Okay. It, it's, I'm like, I know how to make a pizza if I want. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can get on the internet and look up Ming Tsai and I'll have the best Chinese food of my life if I just do this recipe and I have all the ingredients right. right. You know, you get to a certain point and I think sometimes like, you know, like you just realize, especially when you have children, uh, sometimes you just say, I just need quiet. I just need serenity in my life. <laughs> that happens a lot in my life. Too. I, did, <laughs> right. yeah. I mean, you know, it was a lot. They're four years apart. Mm -hmm. And it was a lot going back to the beginning, you yeah. know. And it, I've really blocked some of it out, especially what I'm going through now. Yeah. Like <laughs> Terrible twos. <laughs> you know, you know and I would say, like, the, the back jerk, the back <gasps> jerk like the dive, oh, the really? dive, you know, oh. and everything. Like, she was mad the other day when the snow melted. So we get out of the car, and uh, she's like, <gasps> 
looking and I'm like, what's wrong? You already see the face changes. It's like the Incredible Hulk with these two-year-olds, you know, like, so you're waiting for it because the face starts to change and the, you know, so she's like, snow, no, snow. And then she just throws her back out and she gets on the ground and it's all this, you know, then you see people walking by and you're like, hey, how's it going? Yeah, it's good. Are you having a nice day? You know? You're bringing back an incredible memory and I have to share this. Sorry, Cameron. <laughs> she was too. She started having a temper tantrum mm -hmm. in the bathroom. Well, I wasn't paying enough attention to her, so she crawled in the tub where she could flail and it would reverberate and make all sorts of great drum oh, noises wow. yeah. so that I had to hear her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and like, yeah. and yeah. the back arch, I forgot. The back arch. Oh, my oh, God. The back arch is the national yep. symbol, I um, believe, of, of the going, terrible Oh, my God. <laughs> right. no, she's 21 years old. Oh, almost 22. So I you do get there. there. I she still yeah. does it. <laughs> I haven't seen that in a long time. I think she can still do that. <laughs> I haven't seen that in a long time. Oh my God. Like, I might that. actually now patent a, some sort of design with a the back, back arch, arch, you know, and like yeah. create an organization. Oh my or God. So, you're also a writer. I am. And, yeah. you know, I've always loved to write my whole life. Um, my first article in my life I had published, I was probably about 12 or 13. And um, I wrote an article for my social studies class and I got published in the Baltimore Sun. Mm. And what was interesting about that was um, it was an article about uh, racism, but what was interesting uh, was an, about an incident that happened to me as a young child in South Carolina at the beach. Um, but I actually got a lot of mail, you know, and I, it really- um, Good and incite, bad? Good and bad. I like, and I so like- so <laughs> my mother hid the mail. The bad okay. mail, right? Okay, okay good. I actually found it one day. Mm -hmm. I was in the basement. I love to say found, you know, I was snooping through stuff. <laughs> I found Christmas it. Time, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I found it. Look what and I was reading it, so I, you know, and it was some really terrible, terrible mm -hmm. things there. But inside of me, I, I kept thinking, wow, I struck a chord, you know, yeah. just from what I wrote, you know, so that stayed with me. I never internalized the, neg the negative mail. So Good for you. Uh, mm -hmm. now uh, translating that into being a maternal health advocate, so how that started with, uh, I suffered a postpartum hemorrhage um, after Grayson, my first daughter, was born. I didn't have any pre-existing conditions. I had a perfectly healthy pregnancy, and even up until delivery, everything was great. But shortly afterwards, I started hemorrhaging. And so they had to take her out of the room. They took my husband out of the room very quickly. I would say maybe about two minutes after she was born is all I really got. They put her on my chest and they had to take her right off, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, pretty soon after that, um, I, a specialist got called from um, Cornell or I think New York Press, I forget the hospital, but one of the big ones. And he just happened to be 15 minutes away from the hospital. You I was at so New Jersey. Lucky. Very lucky, you are very so lucky, lucky because I always say, statistically speaking, you could have pledged that. No, really. Yeah. I should. I mean, really, statistically speaking, I shouldn't be here because yeah. I actually had another uh, situation a year following that. Another hemorrhage. I had a miscarriage. I didn't <gasps> even know I was pregnant, and it was at a, yo a frozen yogurt shop, getting yogurt with Gigi and a friend and her daughter. And I thought I was getting my period back. You know, it had been a year. I'm like, oh, maybe my body's just getting back to normal. And so, thank God, my doctor's office was just two blocks up the street. Gosh. And But it was so bad that as I'm walking down the street, you could see the blood coming through my pants. And it was like a trail all the way to the doctor's office. So people are staring it's and all this like stuff. You were yeah, so it was it was terrible, you know. So you I forget was, how life and death being a woman yeah. is. I figured some yeah. of that is in menopause. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then you right. did actually have a second child. I did, and, and a lot of people, you know, that's always like the number one question I get is why did you do it again? Um, you know, it's a very personal thing you have to decide as a family. It wasn't the easiest thing. Um, I, I like to tell people I'm an only child and so is my mother. I really wanted my daughter to have a partner in life, or Gigi. I wanted her to have a, a best friend. Was the risk great? It was. But at the same time, um, you know, it had been four years in between the two. Mm -hmm. And um, once it has happened to you one time, of course, there's no guarantee it's not going to happen again. However, my doctors Heightened were awareness. there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. At that point, you, you know. You know uh, all the specialists that should be there. You know what nursing team you want there. My doctor didn't take a vacation around the whole <laughs> month within my due date. Mm -hmm. You know, so everyone was on code red, you know, like high alert. Um, and I was just continuing the work um, that I was doing, but public speaking and writing and just really trying to make a difference in other women's lives because one of the worst parts for me was when it happened after Gigi was born was just this feeling of, of like, I can't be the only person this happened to. Mm -hmm. So when I started writing about it, 
on a personal blog, it really was for me. I had no intention that it was going to reach all these people and lead to all these things. It was really to help me feel better. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason why I started publishing my journal entries was because I felt like there has to be someone else who feels like this. Mm -hmm. And so um, one day Christy Turlington came across a tweet of mine and she saw my blog. And for those who don't know Tur Christy Turlington, yeah. Supermodel. Yeah, supermodel yeah. Christy yeah. Turlington. Right. That one. <laughs> it was like the weirdest tweet in the world, you know, like, hey, uh, uh, private message me, Christy Turlington. Like, someone playing a joke on Yeah, me. come on. Right. You know, this um, isn't real. Yeah. But she did, and we connected. So she started an organization called Every Mother Counts, which brings attention to maternal mortality all over the world. Right. And so I wrote for her website, and then it really took off from there. Mm -hmm. And then I became a blogger for Huffington Post. And so, you know, after what happened to me, um, I was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder because I was replaying the event. I was very angry oh, about wow. what happened, mm. just guilt, sadness, loss, all of it, you know, and I, I actually became like afraid to leave my house and just live my normal wow. life, you know, I was very, you know, I would go to the grocery store, you know how people do the peek over at the baby, like you're yep. pushing a stroller or something. I almost like backhanded somebody one day because I was just like, she just made, she just got so close. She was like, you're know, like putting her, about to put her hand like, and well, I was like, should, ah, yeah. you know, yeah. so. Some folks are so intrusive. Yeah, yeah, so. Um, <laughs> So I just decided that, you know, there's so many people who feel so alone and so many things going on in their life. I think motherhood can be very isolating. Mm. I think it's one of the most isolating um, things that can happen to a person. <laughs> and you need support. I was lucky. I got a lot of support by joining a mother's group, but nobody in that group had been through what I had yeah. been through. So I said, I need to start a category here where people can really say, you know what, this horrible thing happened to me. I'm, whether it's been, I get letters from women it's 10, 15, 20 years later, and they're still upset about it. Yeah. And they're saying to me, I'm so happy that, you know, you put this out there. It helped me feel better. I have someone to connect to. Mm -hmm. And that's really I, my whole message with everything is I never want anyone to feel alone in, you, in this. You're so on point. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think back, I was fortunate. My sister was a pediatrician. So mm -hmm. I had an instant expert yeah. to call even over the stupidest stuff as far as mm -hmm. my child goes. But we all go through a variety of experiences whether it's being a mother mm -hmm. a, a, a you know or even just ourselves we take for granted that and you're going yeah. to just have this baby and yeah. it's going to be fine and you just go on and for most women it does but oh, this totally. is totally you know, I mean, for healthy from, women to, go, to almost yeah. die i mean yeah. that's just something that is yeah. extraordinarily you unique. know it's healthy best health care you know all this right. stuff you know so i i also started thinking about the women who didn't have really good health care right you know and so that's when i started contacting the politicians and uh, trying to bring more awareness to maternal mortality bills that no one pays attention to Do you have and any idea what the percentages or any idea what the number Numbers are like in terms of that in the U.S. Yeah, I about 1,200 yeah. women per year die in this okay. country. Wow, during um, childbirth. Yeah, during, during childbirth, childbirth or right a pregnancy last, complication. Yeah. But because there is no way to study the statistics, because there's been no official uh, maternal mortality commission established in every state. There's no way it could be ten thousand. They don't accumulate, so, accumulate exactly. It. Right. So no one's really uh, paying attention to the numbers. But eighty-six thousand women in this country every year suffer a birth or pregnancy complication. Mm -hmm. And what the bad part is about that is that. Uh, they come home with all these feelings that they can't share with anyone. Right. You know, when I was in New Jersey, I would have people PM me over Facebook and say, hey, can I meet you for a coffee? And I, or, you know, can we meet at the park? And literally, sometimes the person would just sit on a park bench with me and just cry right. their eyes out. Mm -hmm. right. And that was, a, you know, and, I'm, and I felt so good that I could just be that for them. What is that about? Is it like relief or just the, because they, 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 they you know, live through it. You know yeah. what it is? It's camaraderie mm -hmm. and feeling normal about what happens and saying, my whole thing is this bad things happen to everybody mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. you know but at some point you have to obviously you're either going to live with trying to push it away push it away push it away and you'll never run away from it no. mm. you have to face it so it's about building support for people helping them find resources to 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 get that healing you, that they need you are so on point and i'm kind of a little moved um a little personal experience and i'm flipping it and going to meet somebody tomorrow. My daughter is wonderful, she's great, she's a cancer survivor. Mm -hmm. When we were going through it, I had to be strong. I couldn't share with anybody. I would go outside in a rainstorm and scream mm -hmm. and cry because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I couldn't show mm -hmm. anybody. Yeah. Happens there's a couple of women in town who are going through that with their children and I reached out and I said, I understand. 
you want to connect with me, and one of them and I are going to try to connect. Um, and all it is is, I I get exactly what you're saying, yeah. and that's all. It's like, hey, I can't mm -hmm. offer advice, but I know what you've been through, and I can just give you a hug. Sorry, I'm getting right. a little no. emotional here, guys, oh. but not in a good way. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm so touched that you're yeah. doing it because I don't know if people understand. We aren't alone. I always said mm -hmm. when my kids did something fantastic. I was the only parent in the world that had this outstanding, fantastic child, well, four. and they were yeah. the best. <laughs> but when so something awful kid. happened, <laughs> when something awful happened, and you know, they all had their own little minor awful mm -hmm. to major awful, I had to console myself with millions and billions had also had this experience, yeah. and that I wasn't alone. And right. then I had my sister; I yeah. could call about their some of their issues. But you know, again. That ability, that's amazing. Well, How yeah, wonderful for you. Yep. That's you. the yeah. ending. Everyone has like these personal journeys. Yeah, and the sorry. Way that, yeah. that you're able to be able to <laughs> express them. I'm yeah. okay. Well, there, <laughs> one is that you're just sharing something where you're able to support each other. Right. Yeah. But the journeys, everyone has these journeys. All of them. Yeah. And I think the, the, the great thing is you have two great kids now. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. stuff like that. And like you. And new friends. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm <laughs> in, baby. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many things in someone's journey that can just hold you back, yeah. and you're not letting those things hold yeah. you back. It's like, yeah. okay, no, all right. Yeah. Yeah. How can yeah. I help the next person online? Right. That's, and, that's, you know, and how yeah. can I help myself? You know, and that's why knowledge. I gave up. Um, you know, people will ask me, "Do I miss doing makeup? Do I miss this?" And it's mm -hmm. like, look, I, I had a career you may come that at, was. You awesome. may do it again, and, right? You know, but for me right now, it, it's you know, there was one. always something in me. And this started when I was writing, and I remember like kind of. Uh, you know, in my kitchen pacing the, before the very first time I hit the publish button on the computer, and there was always this voice in the back of my head going, this is what you need to do, you have to keep going, you have to keep doing this, and so, and that again for me was the healing. Now, not, this is not for everyone being on this public platform, right, 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 right. Right. but the letters that I get where people feel like they can, and it, they're from everybody, doctors, grandmothers, wow. grandfathers, dads, daughters, mothers, they're, they're from everyone, all ages, oh, all I mean, races. I think when people hear you know, more, it's, issue and journey. A lot of times you think like, well, it doesn't happen these days. This is back in pioneer exactly. time. No, like it, exactly. No, yeah. exactly. So it, it, the, the one, it makes it that it's still relevant right. today. Right. And, I, and you know, it's kind of funny, before we do these shows mm -hmm. and stuff like that, I always post up, hey, we're going back to HK and film. Yeah. Here's who the guest is today. And if there's things in the community you want to shout out. And it, it's kind of funny, um, a woman shouted out that um, a welcome to you uh -huh. And then she's a fellow blogger and can't wait to catch up. Her nice. name is Maria Morasco, oh, and I yeah, guess you guys yeah, know each other. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's kind of cool that she's yeah. also a Huffington blogger. Yeah, and yeah. She connected. We're going to try to meet face to face because she connected with me. Cool. Um, Let's go mention to if anyone wants to tap into your blog, oh, yeah. where do you find it? Tamoria McQueen. Just Google T I M O R I A McQueen, and it'll it'll pop up. And we'll, my, put, it, and we'll put it on the page, and, like, be, yeah. and it'll be on the show. Yeah, and, yeah. The show. and I'm also planning to uh, start uh, a support group uh, for for moms here. Good. You know, we're still getting established and everything, but if anyone's interested in you know just you know having a place to share confidentially mm -hmm. uh, anything that's happened to you, a birth or pregnancy complication, um, some if you need resources or support, I have tons in mm -hmm. every state wow. you know in every city that I can help well, you find. And yeah. In our own little town, there is a mom's group mm -hmm. and a mom's group Facebook page. Yeah, probably so, on top you of know, those pages. Yeah. And, and you know, I think she was on the really she connect. Yeah. <laughs> 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 everyone, everyone does her stalking, but some of these are locked. You know, kind of ironclad tight. So you know, you have to finally expose yourself. Yeah. You know, you send you send your lease, and you have to send like <laughs> oh, wow. a health report, and you have to give your you know your license, and they're like, oh, okay, well, you, you try to adopt here. a puppy okay. too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're like, okay, like right. yes, I live in the town. I'm I do, I do, town, I do. You know? I don't have a Verizon bill yet. <laughs> oh, you know, but, um, Too funny. But yeah, so. Well, speaking, yeah. speaking of town, let's talk a little bit about what's going on in town, Darlene. <gasps> yeah. What's, what's going new? on in town? <laughs> um, Super Bowl's this weekend. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter. Oh, oh, come on, come on. I don't it's even know who's in it. I have no idea what's oh, going Denver on. Denver and, well, never really and care, Charlotte. But, but, you know. It's, oh, it's fun. The town okay. doings. I mean, you're our, you're our woman about town, darling. Well, I'm actually <laughs> playing an event that's coming up in a couple of weeks. And it's um, neighbors, basically neighbors getting together. Yes. Um, I'm chair of the Hoppington Democratic Committee. And um, Dick Duggan, that was chair um, until like three, four weeks ago for years, this past fall when there was so much negativity about Muslims and the press, mm -hmm. he actually, we have a mosque right in town, called him up and said, hey, would you like a chance to introduce ourselves? We want to let you know that not everybody is hateful and yeah, things like that. Scary. They welcomed it. 
And so um, February 18th in the lower town hall is a chance just to get to know the, your neighbors, a chance that um, the leaders from the SMOS are going to come. If you have specific questions before you email them to me or Dick, and um, they will be like kind of pre-prepped on some questions, sure. but they're going to be open sure. to other That's questions. Nice. I know people have asked like yeah. about roles of women, uh, roles on you know what you eat, different you know, mm -hmm. well, what it, part of Islam and things like that and stuff. So it's, it, but it's a chance to open up, myths, and it's kind of yeah. neat um, demystifying and 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 let's that we're face all it. part of the same community and we can build bridges as, just, just in our backyard. We, we have. You know, we have traditions we take for granted. We think about um, being, you know, I think most of us have an understanding of Jewish and, and, and the Christian Judeo traditions. Christian yeah, the whole Judea, you know, and food but traditions. Mostly this Friday was, fish or no yeah. meat for yeah. the Catholics. Well, and, but, but, you know, and, yeah. and, but, but this, this was is really not too. Not pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, sorry, the, God. The formation of doing this was meat. really just an intro to our committee and yeah. a chance to. Um, Say hey, we want to build bridges on something that's been getting a lot uh, uh, negative uh, press, yeah, negative right, press, yeah. and hate press, yeah. and it's turned into a community event. Um, our state representative is going to be there. Our state senator is most likely going to be there, mm -hmm. and so you know um, that's on February 18th. Uh, school vacation is coming up. I know, um, and um, there's a, some new deals coming out. If you join the RHH subscriber page at realhoppingtonhousewives.com, yeah, a lot of cool. Yeah, we've got deals popping in good. and some. Clothing line, so it's gonna be fun. And that's um, good. Stay Always in touch on the page. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, sorry, we've got to get going. <laughs> Conti we'll continue on here, but thank you very much for yeah. joining us, everybody. And thanks right. for coming guys. to Moria. Thanks for having me, guys. Nice How to exciting. Exciting. Nice to meet you. <laughs>